So how does cellular contamination look like? Um, here is an, an image of um, a cell, a cell type in, in culture. And with uh, time and experience, you, you start to recognize your, your cells. You know how they should look like. You know how fast they, need, they grow and, and how often they need to be split. And if you look closely, you probably in the middle see um, um, a few cells which have more round structure, while the others are round and more spindly in shape. So what that lab did was um, to run a, a PCR to check what's actually going on. And here we have a T is the test sample, so that's genomic DNA of the, of the cells, um, a negative control and a, a control for the, um, for the species. And you see that those cells contain uh, human cells, but they also do contain um, uh, mouse cells. So that means here is a clear um, contamination between two um, species. And just to, to show you how the cells should look like normally, so they're no, uh, more round in, in shape. And if you run the PCR, then uh, you see that there's only human cells um, in here and no mouse cell. So that's how it should look like. So how to prevent or how to manage um, a cellular contamination? Um, therefore, I would like to start with, with the labeling system. So it is very important that um, the cells are labeled correctly so that you don't mistake them for another cell line. And therefore, um, it would be very hmm, good if the whole lab or the department would have a standardized uh, label system. But I, I know that that is um, very difficult to implement. Um, so therefore, I, I summarize some of the tips how everyone who's doing cell culture can name the cells that that person is, is, is making. So therefore, for example, start with a unique name for, for a cell line. Um, try to use that name consistently. Don't make synonyms or abbreviations of that name once you have established it for yourself. Um, rename um, genetically engineered clones and try to link them still to your parental cell line. Um, list every step you do with the cells in the, in the material and method. Also, for example, when you got the cells um, uh, and when you um, saw them, where you saw them, and also what you've done with it um, um, since then. With this, it's very easy to to find the information back and trace that cell line back. Um, and of course, you, you're not very, <laughs> it's not allowed to use the personal identifications of the donors anymore. So for example, HeLa uh, would not be um, allowed anymore. And here's, for example, one, um, uh, um, yeah, one name. So here they gave the name of the institute, uh, the tissue that it was coming from, and the biopsy um, that was used to generate those cells, so that would be the whole um, name of, of the cell line. The second um, step is authentication, um, and that is very um, important, um, also quite difficult to do. Um, aut authentication can be done by morphology, as we have seen in two or three slides before. Uh, when you know how your cells look like and something happens to them and they look different, that might give you a good uh, <laughs> idea what's happening. It at least should ring your alarm bells. Um, and of course, you can do um, a karyotyping to check if, if the cells is what you think you are. And I've placed here um, a HeLa cell karyotype. And I think everyone can appreciate that the, the chromosomes in, tho in those cells are very um, weird. So normally you should have for every chromosome two, two, tri two types. And um, here we have, for example, for chromosome one, we have already five uh, instead of, of two. So that already also gives you an idea that something is going on with, with, with your cells. Um, of course, there are also molecular um, methods, um, short tandem repeats and um, single nucleo nucleotide polymorphisms. Um, but as I said, those are more difficult um, uh, to do and to implement. Uh, so how can you detect um, a cellular contamination? Um, well, the easiest by, by, um, this, uh, by checking your cells on a microscope um, and, and hopefully seeing that there is a, a cell line which looks weird. Um, and 
by obtaining cell stocks with a, with a certificate. For example, for ATCC, if you want to buy a HeLa cell line, they um, always come with a certificate of analysis in which is stated um, how the cell line was, was tested and, and what the, the characteristics are. And I think the last um, point, the management, is, is summarizing um, everything in, in one. Um, and it, it, yeah, it is very important that um, uh, personal is, is trained in a very good way so that they know how to, to label cells, um, how to use good aseptic, aseptic techniques, and how to recognize um, contamination. Um, it would be very helpful for all the different labs that there is a plan of action, what needs to be done once um, uh, contamination is encountered, um, a way to, to make sure that there is no cells lost, would be, for example, to prepare a cell bank. That means that you have um, a seed stock of, for example, 10 vials of um, a cell line that you just gained. You, you, you saw this in your system. And next to it, you have a walk, working seed stock, um, which is about 15 vials um, from which you saw your cells and you do your experiment with. In case there is an, um, a contamination, you can, for example, throw out your working seed stock and go back to the seed stock for one vial and divide it again in a 15 uh, vials of a working seed stock. By this, you prevent that all your seed stock is being contaminated and you always have a backup. Uh, of course, it would be very helpful for a lot of labs to have um, period, periodic um, authentication a program which really detects once a cell um, is contaminated. Um, that, of course, um, later on cell saves a lot of um, pain when you try to publish your results and you then figure out that half of the experiments were done with lung cells instead of uh, gut cells. Um, regular contamination tests should be done um, for at least for, for mycoplasm as it is um, not very visible. Um, and it can have a big impact on the on the results and the behavior of the cells. And there should be yeah, cleaning uh, cleaning events should be scheduled for in incubators, water baths, but also for the hoods itself. And I think with this, I would like to come to um, a ten way um, a ten point plan to uh, reduce contamination risk. And basically, um, the first one is um, stick to, to, the, to the basics. So try to work as clean as possible. Use septic techniques. Use gloves when you go into the hood. Um, clean everything that you take into the hood. Clean everything that you take out of the hood. So it's really um, try to work as clean as possible. The second part is um, um, sharing is caring. So if you, con if you um, detect the contamination in your flask or in your dishes, um, please also um, uh, talk about this with your, with your colleagues to make them aware that this is going on. So they can also check themselves and they can be, it can be taken um, track on how it spreads if it spreads. Hopefully, there's a good plan of action to prevent the spreading in the first place. The second part is cover your culture. As I mentioned before, for example, for aerosols, um, try to keep yourself and the cells safe. 